Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and let's talk about that Tiangon one that just crashed into the ocean somewhere there on Earth. And also, let's announce the winners of the competition. But also, let's discuss where it actually crashed because turns out Tiangon one crashed into the middle of the new Russian Empire. Yep, there is that. So let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. And welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So, before I go into too much detail, you're the winner! That's right, you! Well, actually, I'll announce the winners at the end. Let's talk about where Tiangon 1 crashed. And I'm going to go into some science here, a little bit of history, and talk a little bit more about the details of my discoveries of the last few hours. So, first of all, where did I get most of this info? Uh, there's this really cool guy I follow on Twitter, whose name is Jonathan McDowell, and he uh, is basically an astronomer, or I guess, uh, in this case, astrophysicist, in um, Harvard Smithsonian Center. If you scroll down through these messages, he had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people following him and then talking to him about this whole situation. And he's been keeping track of uh, the Tiangon 1 progress in very, a lot of detail, a very, very detailed observation. Um, here's actually what the last few minutes of Tiangon 1 approach looked like. You can see it basically almost uh, crashing into the ocean at this point. This is where it was, it was already burning, into the, um, burning through the atmosphere. Um, but uh, it did crash in the area right here. Did I say Russian Empire? Yes, I did. I'll come back to this in a second. Let's go to, back to the Twitter for a second. And let me show you the actual location for the potential crash. So basically, this is where we think the largest chunk of the Tiangon 1 crashed on our planet. Um, it's right here. Interestingly, and this is something I had no idea about because I was basically sleeping at this point, it actually passed by uh, or very close to where I live. It actually literally flew overhead. Um, I was surprised about that. I did not expect it at all. Did not see anything. No, I don't think anyone did. And I think this was actually before the burnout, so I wouldn't be able to see anything anyway. But interesting nonetheless. So there was a slight chance that it would have crashed somewhere where I live. Um, but here we have another really interesting tweet. And this is actually from FlightAware that shows you all of the flights in a certain area at a certain time. And here you can kind of see that there were actually several flights that may have seen the actual... Um, the burning process and the uh, re-entry itself. Interestingly, if those people did see something and potentially filmed it on camera, we're probably going to be getting their videos in the next few hours or so. Or maybe someone, someone already uploaded it. But there's also a high chance that because there's only like, what, five airplanes here, most people probably slept through this. They had no idea it's coming. Uh, the pilots clearly didn't know that it was coming. And uh, even though it kind of landed in this area right here somewhere, uh, this airplane, wherever it's going, somewhere in the US, or possibly Mexico, uh, most likely is the best source of footage for us. If somebody on this airplane saw something, um, they probably recorded it. If not, then we have no footage whatsoever. Now, all right, let's, uh, let's go to Google Earth here, and let's find the location right here on Google Earth where it actually crash landed. So, I've kind of mapped it out, and we're just going to confirm this in a few seconds. And basically, this is in, the, in an area known as the uh, Cook Islands. This is part of New Zealand, uh, a little bit off the coast of French Polynesia, a little bit off the coast of American Samoa. But it's basically in this area here. And so it was kind of coming from this direction. And so there's probably a lot of debris along the coast of, this, uh, of these various um, atolls that are in this area. But the one we're looking for is actually right here. And this is really, really interesting because it even has a Google map uh, photo here. This is, a, this is a very interesting atoll known as Suwaro. And uh, according to the map, if you actually look at it again, this is kind of where this cross is pointing. It's actually pointing this location. Uh, now, uh, I believe this was reposted saying this was northwest of uh, Tahiti, but this is far from Tahiti. Tahiti is actually right here. And the so-called uh, space car graveyard is actually down south. So it's actually far from this area. Uh, we are very, very close to this part. So now I'm not really calling this an island because technically this is uh, more of a reef atoll. Um, basically a series of islands. It's a series of islands formed by reefs. And this really has an interesting story behind it and an interesting history behind it. And also there's probably no one here. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about this particular location. First of all, the name, Suwaro. I, I was actually kind of curious about this because it does sound like a, a typical Russian name. It turns out it is. It's named after a ship, a Russian ship from the so-called um, Russian-American company. A company formed by Russian Empire back in like mid 1800s to explore the world and also to basically settle the so-called Russian America. If you know your history, let's go back to America for a second. Back in the days, Alaska, which is right here, used to belong to the Russian Empire. The Russian Empire was actually very adamant on establishing what would be uh, the Russian America back then. Uh, until some certain events happened and they basically just kind of gave everything to the US. Um, but this was supposedly one of the discoveries. And this was made by a Russian captain on a Russian ship. Who would have thought, right? Uh, and he named this area uh, Suvorov. And this is actually the guy that it's named after. This is the so-called Alexander Suvorov. Uh, a big Russian general who I know absolutely nothing about, unfortunately. Even though my heritage is slightly Russian. Anywho, moving on with our lives and let's briefly talk about this uh, atoll and basically this series of islands. So the one that's really famous here is this right here, Anchorage Island. This is actually a place you can visit if you ever go to Cook Islands. Um, you can basically purchase a, um, a permission to visit this island. And uh, th this island is famous for a person who used to live here. Now we'll kind of zoom in a, a little bit more here. Uh, there used to be a person by the name of Tom Neal who used to live here all by himself for like 16 years. And he wrote a book about it. He basically was, uh, well, you can learn about him if you go to Wikipedia. Here is his wiki. Uh, he was a New Zealander who basically uh, wrote a book called uh, An Island to Oneself. Now, interestingly, um, this guy basically just chose one day to just kind of go and live on this island and he did for 16 years and some people tried to actually follow him but uh, uh, this one guy that actually did follow him ended up giving up because it was too difficult to find food here uh, but even before him there were people uh, specifically one guy in particular that actually did the same thing uh, back in like early 19th century um, no sorry early 20th century or late 19th century there was another person by the name of uh, Jack Buckland this guy right here who also did the same thing. He was actually a trader and he established um, a small trading post here. Not that there was a lot of ship going around, but he basically lived as a trader in um, around Cook Islands. Now, why did I say that this was a Russian empire? Well, here's where it kind of gets a little bit tricky. There's this person, this guy right here, kind of looks like me, not really, has my name though, don't know why that uh, is some sort of a Russian entrepreneur. Basically, long story short, the rich guy decides to buy an island. Uh, I don't really think he succeeded just yet, but he did succeed in doing one thing. He established an empire. Basically, he tried to recreate, unofficially, I guess, a um, so-called Romanov Empire. This is actually the old ancient empire that uh, was the last empire of Russia before the uh, fall of the empire and the the conquest of communism that be, uh, that essentially destroyed the empire and created the communist state. This was in 1917 back in Russia. The thing is, there are some survivors of the, uh, the state of the empire, specifically there are certain heirs to the empire. And this guy, the Anton Bakov guy, decided to find those uh, survivors and essentially establish a new Russian empire. Now, this is a real story, true, true thing. True story, bro. So, anywho, if you actually go and read about it on Wikipedia, it's a pretty cool story, and uh, their logic is, well, they're actually, they make sense. They decided to reestablish the empire based on the islands that were discovered by early Russian empire explorers in the same fashion that back in the days, uh, the Portuguese and the Spanish explorers could actually claim certain islands and certain land. And I mean, for example, you know, Mexico, just a random country I picked, uh, was technically found by certain Spanish explorers and they, through conquest, uh, were able to uh, make it part of Spanish Empire. So, they've discovered these 17 islands that you see on the screen right now that they claimed as part of this new Russian Empire. And the Suvaro Atoll, discovered by uh, Mikhail Lazarev, which uh, I believe he was one of the, uh, one of the Russian uh, admirals who actually was possibly even piloting this particular ship, 
And so everything here was discovered by either a Russian imperial or someone related to the heir to the Russian Empire. And so these 17 alliance are the ones that are claiming and are trying to purchase them and are trying to basically establish this new Russian Empire. So far though, uh, I believe they haven't succeeded, according to the island administration at least. According to the guy uh, himself, this guy, uh, he says that he did succeed. Also, it seems that he may have actually uh, had some approval by the nation of Gambia to basically uh, recognize their micronation as a kind of a state, an official state. So in other words, they're trying to create a country, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. And so all of these um, islands, including uh, part of Antarctica, actually, are being claimed by them as this new Russian Empire. Now, if you were to actually imagine uh, the size of this new Russian Empire, it would be pretty damn big. It would actually be really huge. I mean, if they're claiming all of these islands that they visited back in the days and were the first to discover them, uh, this would be a, a land that's like this big. Okay, it's not land, it's technically ocean, but... Today you can totally claim it as land, as, as long as there's a series of islands uh, in this area. And so, I mean, if he ever succeeds, then technically this would be the uh, so-called Romanov Empire or the new Rus Russian Empire, if you will. But for now, though, he hasn't really succeeded. For now, he is still in the process of negotiating with countries, specifically the Cook Islands. But he basically did try to buy them and create this uh, area as part of the new Russian Empire. So now hopefully you know a little bit more of history and now you know a little bit more about where the uh, Tiangon one ended up. So it's somewhere in this area where the biggest splashdown occurred. Uh, but the thing is, this particular area is currently only, um, usually has about one person living there. They basically hire one or maybe two uh, caretakers and they live here for about six months and then they change them um, every every year. And uh, the population here is from zero to maybe one or two people. So the caretakers are responsible for taking care of this island. That's essentially their job. But it's very likely that they have not seen the splashdown. The chance of them seeing the splashdown is very, very low. And if they have, we won't really hear from them for a few months until they come back to the civilization. Because there's no internet, there's no cell phone services. And any kind of a radio transmission they might have would not be enough to transfer pictures or videos. Well, anyway. Enough about Swarrow Island and enough about the history. Let's talk about the winner. So, a few of you guys actually did have a relatively accurate prediction. Now, I'm guessing some of you may have cheated because you basically edited your posts. So, new rule. Unofficial rule. I'm excluding any edited posts. I mean, that's kind of fair because, yeah, obviously people have edited posts and edit actual coordinates and actual areas where it did crash. Um, but there were certain people that posted their uh, original post hours before the crash and they had a relatively accurate predictions. Now maybe they were following certain streams or certain uh, media that was actually trying to make predictions. Still, it's pretty fair. Some people said it was, well, actually one person said it was Cook Islands. That was probably the best uh, prediction. Someone said it was actually close to the... Okay, here we are, Pitcairn Islands. Now, these islands are actually relatively far. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at the distance here, it's several thousand kilometers. But because it's um, it's a pretty good prediction, I think I'll accept that as well. Although it's a little bit more f uh, far away from another prediction, which was, um, there we go, Kiribati, an island of Kiribati. Someone actually did have that um, as one of their predictions and it's, it's relatively close in comparison to the other prediction, which is somewhere over here. Oh, and lastly, there was also another person that actually said North Island or off the North Island of New Zealand, which I think is also pretty close. I mean, it's not that close, but it's relatively close. So I think we'll accept it as well. So the winners are in no particular order. And please message me um, either on Facebook or on Twitter, just so that I can actually send it to you directly. Because for a lot of you, you have your settings set on Google so that people cannot message you. Uh, so I can't really send you a message here on YouTube. But winner number one, I guess this is the closest prediction. Michael Ma Malek, I hope I pronounced this correctly, with the uh, prediction of Southeast Cook Islands. Although it was technically North Cook Islands, but still Cook Islands was really the closest prediction. Then we have winner number two with uh, Kiribati, and this would be uh, Digger John. 
I think that's probably not the real name, but I'm going to assume that maybe that's also just a nickname. Uh, then we have winner number three. A person by the name Sidrushok? Sidrushok. Sidrushok. I'm going to stop here and basically congratulate you instead. Uh, this was the person that uh, predicted this as the uh, Pitcairn's Islands, which are right there. Also, Carl Reiter predicted that this would be North Island of New Zealand. Still kind of far away, but we'll accept that as well, because this is technically in the northern part of uh, New Zealand territories. And lastly, now, this is actually not related to predictions at all. There was one person that actually put a lot of effort into calculating the mathematical parameters and tried to basically use the altitude change in predicting where this would um, essentially crash. I thought that was a really cool attempt. So, Sin Viper, even though you didn't win, uh, feel free to message me as well. There might be another game available for you as well, because that was a really cool attempt. I really enjoyed the fact that you provided all the detail. And uh, lastly, this person I cannot possibly pronounce because it's in Arabic. But this is a cool story. So this, I'm assuming this is a girl, um, is actually telling the story of how she was watching the video and she's basically saying how she enjoys the, watching the videos, which is, you know, thank you so much. But it turns out her neighbor was watching one of the videos too and she recognized the tune of the intro. And now this neighbor turned into her good friend which is absolutely amazing. Like, I, I I actually am so completely bedazzled and shocked that uh, this is even a thing, that two people who clearly did not know each other before would watch uh, my videos in basically the same sort of area and would meet each other that way. Uh, having this effect on people is something that I did not expect this channel would have, and this is totally deserves the praise, the, you know, the shout out, or whatever you want to call this, and obviously if you want the game, please message me as well. So anyway, what's the best way uh, to reach me? Well, I think Facebook is the fastest. Uh, the Facebook link is in the description below. Twitter is also pretty fast. Uh, if you do message me on YouTube, there's a slight chance it might end up in spam. So if I don't reply, please do Facebook or Twitter. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. So basically, that's it. We're kind of just going to stop this here and escape our planet Earth in Space Engine and fly far, 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 far away. Now, hopefully in the future, we'll have more of these contests, um, maybe even in the near future, because there's always some sort of event that goes on and there's always a way for me to turn this into a mini game. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for enjoying the channel and finding people through my videos. I mean, that's awesome. Next thing you know, people will get married and start sending me messages how I basically was responsible for hooking them up. I would love that, by the way. If that happens to you, please message me. I would love to tell your story. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And we are going to go on a trip far, far away from our galaxy. And by the way, tomorrow, you're going to learn something really interesting about our planet Earth. We're going to be using Google Earth to go and explore some really cool things. So come back and you'll learn a few more things that you may have not known before.